Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It is another Friday Night Live, another podcast. I'm so excited. Listen, this today and this evening has just been an interesting one for me. I went down to the uh, the old home depot. If you guys have never been there before, um, we we're getting new countertops at the Rudd household, and getting countertops, to say the least, is like way more of a stressful situation than I ever thought it would be. Um, because number one, countertop stuff is is expensive, but then number two, it's like really hard to find things that match everything else in your kitchen. I don't like it. I don't like it. And then two. I watched uh, Anthony Joshua absolutely starch Francis Ngannou, and so that was very interesting as well. That's just um, crazy. It shows you there's definitely, definitely, definitely levels to boxing. But anyway, I'm here with my good friend, Mr. Benjamin Nowak. How are you, buddy? I, I was a little bit surprised that you were doing a live stream tonight with the. I, I guess it's boxing, so it's not UFC. Yeah, I mean, I like boxing. I enjoy boxing. I I appreciate it. I appreciate the sport of which it is. I enjoy MMA a lot more just because I enjoy watching like different styles clash and, and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, the dude, I, I knew it was coming. Like Francis Ngannou is a scary human, but he's a scary human when he's got on four ounce gloves and can walk through other people in an octagon and boxing dude, just as far as a, it's a very, it's like golf. It's a very technical thing. Like, yes, it's still fighting and it's still combat and it's still knocking people's heads off, but just the, I don't know, just the, the overall like approach to boxing, the footwork, the head movement, you know, punching and jabbing, it's completely different than, than MMA, but no, I enjoy both. I enjoy both, but no, it was something to watch, to watch Anthony Joshua. I mean, I mean, he starched him, dude, like knocked him out cold, like, I was Crazy. a little surprised how early it was because, like, the girls hadn't even been put to bed yet. I think it's because it was in Abu Dhabi. I think, or somewhere over, I think oh, it was like gotcha. over in the Middle East somewhere. It was one of those places where they got a bunch of money, a bunch of oil money. Like, those people, like, they talk about, you know, like, you know, they say, like, Elon Musk is the richest guy in the world. But I think, truthfully, like, they said one time, or I heard somewhere that, like, truthfully, those dudes have so much money that's, like, unaccounted for that they're probably worth, like, 10 times as much as Elon Musk is. They just, like, do a really good job of hiding all of their money. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's crazy. But how are you, buddy? I mean, it's it's been a minute. It's you've actually made fairly, fairly close consecutive podcasts without taking a break. But how how are you how you been, man? I know it's uh it's been good. I am fishing. It's mm -hmm. not gonna be warm this weekend, but I've been on the water, so my life is back to semi normalcy. Well, good. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. You went fishing video you did the other day was good. Went on yeah, a little lipless. lipless fish. Fish. Yeah. Yep. Got to start the season out, caught a couple fish, got to breathe for a minute. And now we're getting like cold weather again. So no, things are good. Life is good. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. No, we got the weather moving in too. Me and me and Josh, Mr. Bass and Beer down in the comments, we went uh, fishing today and kind of like the weather was wanting to kind of come in all day long like it would shower for a minute and then stop shower for a minute and stop now it's finally here but like dude tomorrow here it's supposed to be like thunderstorms 25 mile per hour winds you know hail the whole nine yards and so it's getting that time of year in east tennessee where we transition from cold fronts to um thunderstorms and like the straight mud yeah straight mud and that's yeah. dude that's we kind of got lucky because the river stayed fairly clean um, so we were able to flood. I mean, we caught some fish, had a good time, but like everything else around me literally looks like Nesquik chocolate milk. And I freaking, I'm just tired of it, dude. Well, I think you and Josh need to fish together more because you catch like almost six pound spots or, <laughs> or you do catch six pound spots and then you catch um, bass today, which you didn't catch bass yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, I mean, we're, he's kind of my, what's funny though is when I do, catch six pound spots and i'm saying josh i believe i have the state record that son of a bitch is paddling up the river like a moth unto a flame trying to be <laughs> it's a musky it's a musky musk i'm like i see the musky i'm like i have the state record spotted bass like get back over here uh that's so funny. no no we have a good time dude me josh and john we have a good time john always takes us to uh 
to like the the craziest places that you ever thought of like in the middle of the mountains and we actually catch fish i normally take us places where i think we're gonna die before we get out of it and josh always takes us to where all the big small mouth live and so we we have we have a good time we have a good time but no we're here for one of my favorite things that i do on this podcast what when when you were like hey you want to come on the podcast i'm like i don't really want to come on and you're like it's uh, it's this thing oh I'm coming on for sure. Yeah, dude. Dude, is it not like the funnest podcast topic ever? It's the best because we yep. don't have to talk like straight fishing. Yep. We can just talk life, whatever. If it yep. comes to fishing, it comes to fishing. Yeah. We just meander through topics and it's amazing. I love it. It's love like it. an episode of rabbit holes. Yes. It's literally, I should just call these things like rabbit holes. Like that's what is all it is. Cause it's all it ends up being. But like the thing is tonight's list is pretty good. Like, I've put together some, you know, subpar ones, and then I've put together some pretty good ones. And I have to say, like, for me, this one is a fun one because there's, like, some serious discussion. There's some fun discussion. There's just, like, life stuff happening right now discussion is just, I love it. I love it. But, yeah, we're, we're about to send it. So the question is, uh, John King wants to know if we're talking butt stuff. Buddy, I'll talk butt stuff with you. I mean, let's go, right? Let's go. Um, that's a way to start this thing. All right. Are you ready for underrated, overrated? I am ready. There were a couple pictures that I don't even know what they are in your mm-hmm. thing. So we'll see. Okay. We're going to send it. We're going to send it. All right. First one is a fun one. I, I can't wait to hear what you say about it. Underrated, overrated, family guy. Um. In current times, I think it's underrated. Okay. In like five years ago, I think it was adequately or overrated. Like it was, it was almost overdone with like you had American Dad and then you had like all these other spinoffs that were sort of Cleveland. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't like the Cleveland. It show. was like too much other stuff, but a Family Guy, I love Family Guy. Like I also family. used to like Futurama. Yeah. Like, yeah, that era of television was great, dude. I I cannot agree more. I am so. Here's the deal: like King of the Hill is my number one animated, like adult, like funny cartoon. Family Guy is my close second, and it's because like when all else fails and there's nothing else on TV, you can go on Hulu and you can turn on Family Guy or King of the Hill in any season on any episode, and you're gonna get a laugh. And like, Y'all dude. At least- like a good smile where you're like oh that's so that's kind of that's kind of funny yeah no it's it dude that's it yeah and my favorite my favorite family guy joke and i'll never forget this one because i had had my appendix taken out and so obviously i was sore as could be just because you know they'd gone in there and cut me open and dug that thing out i was sore and i'm laying on the couch and i'm i'm watching family guy and and stewie's talking about he had he ate a dime and it got caught in his butt like a manhole cover and when he finally <laughs> popped that thing out he said it was like an explosion and dude like it's just poop humor but dude i'm laying there going <laughs> oh <laughs> like trying to not laugh cuz it's hurting my stomach so bad but yeah dude now nah, i i'm going i'm going underrated for the simple fact that it is just like i said i mean like at any moment it doesn't matter what's like when nothing else is on TV, you turn on family guy or King of the Hill. And I like American dad though, too. I think American dad's funny. Um, but Some you turn, American dad was pretty good. It yeah. just started like running together with family guy. And at that point it was too much. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't. And then Cleveland show. I didn't even watch it. Like it wasn't even funny to me at all. Like, so, but no, yeah, I'm going underrated just for the fact that at any moment, it doesn't matter what's on TV or what's going on. You can turn on an episode of family guy and get a giggle. At least one giggle. At, at least, least one. And two, I love eighties humor. Like I love like the, all the like eighties humor, eighties movie references, eighties music references. Like, cause I get a bunch of those, even though I wasn't born in the eighties, I'm like, my dad made me an extension child of the 80s. And so, like, I love all of that stuff and always get a giggle out of it and laugh at it. Like, there's stuff that Bethany doesn't understand that I'm like, you don't get that? And she's like, no. I'm like, come on. That's, that's a Star Wars. And then their <laughs> love for Star Wars, too, matches my love yeah. for Star Wars. So, yeah, underrated is definitely what I would say. All right. I wasn't sure if it was, like, beer or something because you had Peter oh. with a bunch of beer. Yeah, no, it was just, you know, I thought, I thought drunk Peter was the best Peter because, you know, I did, that is a pretty funny one. I, I guess, yeah, there's a few on here that I'm sure you're like, do you know what UFC fighter that is? 
I have no idea. Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll talk. Is it the guy it. with the different colored hair? Yeah, it's the guy with the different color hair. His name's Sean um, O'Malley. We're gonna get into yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. He's fighting for the title this weekend, or he is, is defending his title this weekend. So we'll get into it. You know, I've always got to bring up the UFC fighters when we can. UFC... We, let's just go in while we're here. Yeah, you want to do Sean O'Malley? Yeah, I like it. Right. I like his energy. It's like a Patty Pimblet sort of energy, which yeah. some people don't like, and some people really like. For me, yeah. it, it's like it's like bass fishing. I like the personalities of bass fishing. Yeah. Um, because I feel like there's so much like straight and narrow. This is how you're supposed to do it. You need to talk a certain way. You need to look yeah. a certain way. Like him and Patty, and I'm sure there's others, but like they take a lot of the spotlight. Um, I enjoy the personality. I don't know how he is as a fighter. Yeah, uh, I think what did he like lose one because he broke his ankle or something? So he claims he's un- overrated or uh, yeah. yeah, but like as a personality, he's great. Yeah, it's like no, Milliken for the sport of bass fishing. Absolutely, absolutely, and I love that too. I mean, I think that's the thing about. I heard like I was talking to somebody the other day, and I forgot who it was, but like it was the stupidest conversation I've ever had because they were like, you know, guys like Conor McGregor and Sean O'Malley just ruin the sport. No, they don't. They're what make the sport what it is. I mean, that's like the thing. Sean Strickland is another great example. I mean, a gun in every home and a woman in every kitchen. He literally has a T-shirt on his website that says that. I mean, it's that it's that flamboyant, crazy personality that is what draws people in. It's what draws the casuals in, especially like you. I mean, like I you're have not- no idea about UFC without Sean, right? Like, and without Patty, and without um, uh, like Conor McGregor, right? Like. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be over the top flamboyancy, right? Oh, yeah, like yeah. all it has to be is some sort of human personality. Yep. Because yeah. in, and he's a personality. I mean, that in is UFC yeah. and in in um, fishing, like it just has to be a personality that's not, you know, the same old same old. Absolutely. Yeah. No. It's yeah. And and then too, and then to counter that, you got dudes like John Jones that are just the best. And you've got dudes who are phenomenally good that people just show up just to Anderson Silva. Not only did he have the personality, but he also had the the skill set to do it with. And the thing is, is at the end of the day, like a dude like Conor, Mc, Conor McGregor, he is the UFC. Regardless of what anybody wants to say about it, he is the UFC. I mean, it's why he has such a a a pull when I mean, like literally, I've been talking to people and I've said, I've said like I like the UFC and they're like, Oh, Conor McGregor. That's how synonymous he is with the sport. I mean, it's like you say basketball, Michael Jordan. Now that doesn't equate that he's the best to ever do it. It's just the person that you equate with, you know, the sport itself. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, I'm going to go. Sean O'Malley is here's the deal. We're going to find out how rated he is this weekend. I'll put you, put it that much. I'm a, I'm a Sean O'Malley fan. I wouldn't say that I'm like a huge Sean O'Malley fan, but I, I like his, I just like his overall, like you said, just his like persona, his gravitas, right? Like he's just like, there he is. But Marlon Cheeto Vera, in my opinion, is probably one of the most dangerous fighters in that division. I think that he's ruthless. I think that he fights with just like a a sense of of a sense of like I'm gonna go in here and I'm willing to die because he's a family man. He's got kids. Like he fights for a reason other than what Sean O'Malley's fighting for. Um, and then two, he also kicked Sean O'Malley's leg to a point where he lost feeling in it in the previous fight. Um, so we're going to see what happens. I heard Cheeto Vera. Well, he, I didn't hear. I saw he had a very bad weight cut. So I'm hoping that doesn't affect him very much. I mean, he, he had that like wet look to him, which is like means I had a really bad weight cut. Um, and he was one of the last ones to weigh in today. So hopefully that doesn't play into it too much. But the thing is with Sean O'Malley, I truly believe that if Cheeto gives him the chance, he will knock him out. And so we're going to have to see what happens here. I have no idea. This fight card, 299 is absolutely crazy, dude. Like 299 is is crazy. It's almost better than 300, to be totally honest with you. But I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. But, you know, yeah. So, is that tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Six o'clock, the prelims start. And I cannot wait. I love it. I love it. Dude, I love some UFC. Alex man. loves UFC. Oh, I, love it so. <laughs> I remember. I had to tell this story. I was at uh, your house. I don't remember what fight. I think it was Conor McGregor versus Cowboy. Probably, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, 
it was on, and I don't oh, yeah. know what Bethany did, <laughs> but she was streaming it from her phone. And no, Alex, no, no, no. She was streaming it from her phone, but her and her dad had put some stupid ass timer on my TV where it would turn off after it had been on for so long. And the damn thing turned off. They couldn't find the remote, disconnected the phone, and we we did not get to see Conor McGregor knock out Cowboy Surround. Yeah, yeah. It was like perfect timing. Like they walked in, they like were about to start the fight, and all of a sudden the alarm or the, the timer just shut everything off. Yeah. And Alex goes, Bethany, he knocked him out. He knocked him out. Yeah. And we're like, was, no, we didn't. We didn't miss it. I'm like, yeah, you did. I just watched him knock him out on my phone. Like, come on now. Yeah, no, that was. That was it was so funny. That was so funny. That was a good time. It was a good time. All right. <laughs> this one, this one, this one is on the nose for today for me. Um, and you, because you just had some crap go on too oh, yeah. recently. So underrated. Mm-hmm. Overrated home ownership. Oh, 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 I thought we were going to insurance. Oh, well, uh, that ownership. Um, I say it's uh, adequately rated. Okay. So having owning a home, okay, is an amazing feeling as opposed to renting and trying to buy a house and going through the entire process, especially in today's society where like interest rates are crazy and house prices are crazy. Like I will probably never be able to sell my house because of how low the payments are. <laughs> yes. And if you did and made a bunch of money on it, what are you going to go buy? Something yeah, that is as nice as you spend have. a ton of money and get more, like get a higher interest rate. So yeah. uh, I would say adequately rated. It does suck when things happen because it costs money, but things are going to cost money if you rent or if you, don't have a home and you're homeless living on the streets going to be a lot worse. Yeah. Yeah. So I would yeah. say adequate. I, yeah. I'm going to agree. I mean, it's adequately rated. I love my house. Listen, I love my home. I have 16 and a half acres. I love my house. It's a cool old cantilever roof, 1960s house. Me and Bethany have done a lot of work to it to get it the way that we want it. I got the beard barn. I mean, it's everything that I could want in a home, but man, when shit breaks, it's just like, it's like the, you know, it's like the sink and we're doing the countertop thing. And it's just like, it's one of those things is like, you know, we've been wanting to redo the countertop. Well, then the sink was messed up. Well, when we got into the sink and this is the kind of thing, like maybe if I'd have built it from the ground up, it would be different. But, you know, I bought this home. Obviously it's a sixties home, but it's an awesome house. But, uh, like the guy who put in the sink for some reason put some sort of like liquid nails to fill in the eighth inch gap that was left where they didn't buy the right size sink. And so I can't get the sink out without tearing up the countertop. And it's like, I've tried to heat it with a heat gun. I've tried to chip it out with everything. I've tried solvent. I've tried all this stuff and it's not moving. And so I looked at Bethany, I said, we need a new countertop anyway. So it's like when one project starts, it's like five other projects come on top, but all at the same time, when you get it done, just that like, it's your home. You know what I mean? It's like you can be in your house the way Bethany, I love the way that Bethany loves our home and the way that she interacts in our house and stuff like that. It just makes those things make it home and make it fun. You know what I mean? And make it like way underrated, like, because like everybody should have a house. Um, but no, you're right. Like when me and Bethany got very lucky and bought a house before all the madness of high interest rates and all that stuff. And we are never leaving just because our home payment is like less than most people's house payments. Or I mean, most people's car payments and boat payments. And so for sure, my, my car pay costs more than my house. Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. A significant amount. Yeah, it is. Yes. And Tom, yes. Countertops are ridiculously expensive. We wouldn't look tonight. Um, (laughs) Neptic fields. Septic fields make homes. So we replaced the septic field. That was our biggest one. That was the biggest thing that we had to pay for $15,000 to put that bad boy in. Yeah, that sucked. But now countertops are also ridiculously expensive. We looked at like, we went to the Home Depot tonight. I think we're going to go to like a countertop specific place just because they're going to have like more options to look at. But we went to Home Depot, dude, and there was like nothing less, nothing for less than like $80 a square foot. Except for like, you know, some of like the laminates and stuff, but they look like just, they look cheap. They look like it would be like in a cheap hotel room. And I told Bethany, I was like, I want something nice. You know what I mean? So we're going to look at some butcher block and do all that kind of stuff. But 
it is what it is, dude. I mean, this is what we work for, buddy. Like, you can't take it with you when you go. So, you know what? Save as much as you can. Enjoy life. And when things break like this, just be – I am I am very thankful that we have the means to be able to take care of something because there are some people that don't. And so I'm, I'm happy for that. That's all that matters. That's the positive mental attitude that you got to have about all this stuff. I have a beautiful home that right now I don't have a functional sink in my – kitchen but hey there's people that don't have kitchens at all so you just got to be happy with what you got you know what i mean yep all right underrated overrated spinner baits you take this one first okay i'm going very 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 underrated <laughs> very underrated I think the spinnerbait is so slept on nowadays. Like, I know there's always going to be people like, no, don't be doing spinnerbait and we can't come out. Yeah, so have I. Like, but like, there's so many people that overlook the spinnerbait now that go directly to the bladed jig. And it's like, or, and, and like, I don't get that. Like, dude, the spinnerbait has its place. And especially like right now, I have like early spring into shad spawns. Like, dude, my word, can you get cranked on a freaking spinnerbait? And like, I love it, dude. It's one of my favorite tools. I've always got it tied on the springtime. And even in the winter, dude, I can remember like dead of winter when the water was in the 40s. And like dad would slow roll a big three-quarter ounce Colorado blade spinnerbait. And I mean beat my eyeballs in with that thing. Like it is such – and dude, and when they get it, they get it. Like it ain't no like, oh, I think I got a bite. It is donk. And it's like they don't move. And I absolutely love that. So I'm going highly, highly underrated for a spinnerbait. And I want your rating, but then I want to talk about setups for spinnerbaits because I've been experimenting with different ones all throughout the years. And I kind of want to hear your opinion on it. Yeah, I mean, Dirds really got on a spinnerbait bite last year. So like yeah. 22, um, carried it into 23. But dude, I just like, I can't figure out where I like it in my arsenal with a lot of what I'm doing. Like I can try to burn water and catch them that way and you'll get some bites but it's not like ultra consistent always on the deck of my boat gotcha gotcha so i don't really have a rating for it i'm not like a spinnerbait or a chatterbait like connoisseur i guess well and two kind of where you fish that kind of makes sense because it's like, like you'll hear guys burning one right like taking a three-quarter and burning it over the flats but like yeah. and i know guys that crush them i'm just not I don't know. I have other techniques that I think play better into my style of fishing. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I get that. I get that. Now, see, and I think what I like about a spinnerbait the most is like the versatility of the bait itself. Meaning there are so many, like a jig. There are so many, well, even more than a jig. Like with a blade. Okay. Let me, let me back up, restart my thought process here. So think about like a bladed jig. You've got a piece of metal with a blade attached to it. Done. A spinnerbait. Dude, <laughs> you've got different wire diameter, blade configurations, blade colors, skirt colors, hook styles, head styles, head weights. Like, that's the thing about a spinnerbait for me is, like, I have spinnerbaits for specific things. And, like, like I have spinnerbaits that work really well during shad spawns. I have spinnerbaits that work literally within the shad spawns. I have, like, gizzard shad spawn spinnerbaits, Elwav shad spawn spinnerbaits. You know, Thriffin Shad Spawn Spinner Baits. I have River Spinner Baits. I have like in all the different blade and color combinations. I love it. Like I love all that stuff. And like, but all at the same time, as complicated as it can be, is like it is still like the one of the most old school techniques. And so I really just I don't know. Yeah, I, I love it. I've been throwing my spinner bait though, like on a six eight, it's a six eight medium heavy. Um and it's like a shorter spinnerbait rod, but I really like it because, yeah, like, I can for everything. It. What for everything you're throwing it on a short rod? Uh huh. Uh huh. I've Get been liking it. Boat. Yeah, yeah, and I've been liking it. I've been liking it, but I also kind of find myself fishing a spinnerbait. I'm I am a very target like target oriented cover fisherman with a spinnerbait. Yeah. It's very different than the like Oklahoma style, like where a lot of those dudes will like make those big long casts and like just slow roll it through like a stump field or something like that. For that, I would probably want a little bit longer rod just so I could smack one on a long cast. But just here, it's kind of like, hey, I'm gonna lock this in my hand and go down this bank right here. You know what I mean? And so it's like you just go, 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 and then like hit different like you know little specific targets and stuff like yeah. that. But I mean, 
I've thrown everything from a three eighths to a three quarter on that thing, and dude, I mean, it gets gets the job done. I really like it. Well, you've been throwing one in your uh, reels, and like mm. you'll put that bait like up under you know a bush, like you'll get it yeah. up under the bush or next to a, a lay down. A lot of the ways, like I'm not fishing it so much like that. If I am throwing one, it's like over a sand flat or like you've seen on that lake with the big holes in it you'll yeah. cast it to the other side of the hole and wind it over the top and fish it on the side like it's a seven four cranking rod like it's a seven four glass or not glass graphite cranking rod medium heavy yeah but that's just because i'm like yeah like yeah. not slowing down the handle but yeah exactly i'm also exactly. not like a like an expert yeah, uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert either. I, I just, uh, there's like, so here's the thing I think that people need to understand. Like, there are, let me think about this, a crankbait, a medium diving crank, a crankbait, period. I From fuck, square bills, flat sides, 20-foot divers, a crankbait. A spinnerbait, flipping. Those three baits right there. I've probably been I've probably logged more hours with those three baits than most people have ever fished hours in their life. Like no joke. Like those are the three things. Like from the time I was big up enough to walk and hold a rod and reel, I had one of those three things in my hand and like I spend a lot of time doing it. So like those are the three things that for me like if I have like a ridiculous amount of confidence in, those are the three things that I feel like I can go anywhere and catch fish. So just putting that out there. All right. Underrated. I'm still not an expert. Underrated. I'm just an idiot. Literally, dude, I know jack squat about anything. I just love fishing, and I will tell you exactly what I do when I go fishing. That's it. Like, I've had my experiences on the water and nobody else's, and I'm never going to pretend to know something that I don't know. I'm just going to tell you what I know through thousands of hours. And we edit videos really well to make it look like we catch a lot of fish, but, like, yesterday you called me, and you're like, oh, I suck at fishing. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's, it's how I feel a lot of the time, right? Like, people think we're expert. Yeah. The, our skill level is in talking to a camera in a way that we can help you guys learn how to fish from experiences yep. we had on the water. So, yep. That's it. That's it. All right. Underrated, overrated, the cold side of the pillow. I would I would say it's I would say it's overrated and this is going to catch some flack. Okay. Uh, but to me when it's cold in the middle of summer the cold side of the pillow is nice. Mm -hmm. The other 3 quarters of the year when it's like below 65 degrees it is very overrated. Mm. Because I don't want to put my head on a freezing cold pillow when my body's already cold and I'm getting into bed. Like, mm. no, just have it be like room temp. Have it be nice. That way, when I pull up the covers and I'm like tucked under, my head isn't the only thing freezing on the back of my head because I'm bald. Like, oh, I love it. I love it. So I also, I also, when I sleep, I wear my hood up like this. So that way I don't freeze. To are, are you, so you're a cold, you're a cold sleeper. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, hey, no, I mean, I just like to be warm. <laughs> I just, yeah. See, I, I, am, bundled up. I am a hot, hot sleeper. Like no joke. Like if you turn the air on in the winter, open the window. Like I, I love the cold. I love the cold. You're talking to the guy who gets in, in a cold plunge every morning. Like I love being cold. And so like, I love the cold side of the pillow. I love when it's like 60 degrees in the house when I'm sleeping. Like, I love that. There's also health benefits to it. We're not going to get into I'm all okay. that. I'm okay if it's cold in the house as long as I'm bundled. See, I'm going I'm going highly underrated because of just the fact that I'm such a hot... Dude, I burn up when I sleep. Like, no joke. Like, Bethany, I freeze Bethany to death. But, like, I am... And you wouldn't think that because like I love wearing hoodies and long sleeves all the time, but like I am a very hot natured person, and like I, it, which is weird because I'm also like a cold. Like it's weird. Like I'll freeze to death, but like <laughs> when I lay down in bed, I'm burning up. Like I don't know, but cold doesn't bother me. I guess is what I'm saying. Like the cold but, will never bother me anyway. Exactly. Like, do you want a bit of snowman? Um, <laughs> but like, no, yeah, like like most people be like, dude, it's so damn cold, and I'm like. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I can't, 
I can't sweat when I'm in bed. Like it's got to be cool enough where I'm not hot. Yeah. But I like to bundle up. Yeah. Okay. I get it. So it could be cool, but you want to be like bundled and warm. Yeah. Like I want to bundle myself. So I'm like comfortable. No, see, like I could literally like one blanket in a 60 degree room. Like, and I'm zonky donkey, zonky donkey, son. Zonky donkey. Disgusting. I will say I slept when I slept at your house, I froze to death. It was so cold. I had to put on more clothes. I was like, oh yeah. So fun fact about your body, your body temperature has to raise your core body temperature has to rise by at least two degrees to wake you up in the morning. And your core body temperature has to drop by at least two degrees to put you to sleep at night. It's part of your circadian rhythm and it's part of your body's natural processes. And so in the morning, when I get up and get in the cold plunge, you would think that would be counterintuitive, but actually what happens is the um, non uh, I forgot what the, it's a. Uh, I forgot the term. It's just, it's like your non, um, like sympathetic nerve system. When I get in that cold water, what it does is it actually starts to raise my core body temperature to try to warm my body up, which helps me to wake up more naturally. And in, and it dumps a bunch of endorphins and hormones and all the good stuff into my body that I'm going to need for the day, including turns on my liver to put out proteins into my body to help with muscle repair. And then at night when I do sauna and get my core body temperature to try to rise, what will happen is when I get really hot like that, it'll actually drop my core body temperature because I'm getting hot and it helps me to go to sleep. So cold plunge in the morning to wake you up, sauna at night will literally put you down like someone give you a damn sleeping pill. I would suggest everybody try it if it's available to you and give it a shot. It's really, really awesome. And yes, I love it. All right. This next one is going to be, um, it's going to be a topic, buddy. We're going to have fun with this one. I have, I already know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to let everybody have it. And it's just going to be the way that it is, but I can't wait to hear your opinion. Underrated, overrated, the culture of fishing online right now, culture of bass fishing online right now. I don't even enjoy the culture of fishing online right now. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't consume so underrated fishing. Or I don't consume bass master fishing. Uh-huh. I have considered it's, it's, I don't know how to rate it. It is disgusting to me. Why I don't enjoy it. I like to put out content because I enjoy the comments of the audience that I have. Yeah. And I enjoy fishing because I enjoy to catch fish. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh dude, it's just so gross right now. Yeah. So I just want people to go back to like, when I started YouTube videos, it was just like, Hey dude, nice. And my, my comments still are, it's like, Hey dude, nice fish. Like, What's the technique you're using? Blah, 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 such and such. But when I have to hear people whine about baits or whine about forward facing or whine about people whining about forward facing or whine about, it's like, I just want you to post your cool fish pictures. Don't even care about the weight. I want to hear that you caught 49 pounds and you caught a 12 pounder and you caught a two ounces off a double digit and you caught like, I just want you to be, enjoy fishing. Yep. Go fish. Post your cool fish pick. That's all. I don't like consuming fishing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Like, and it's funny because I used to consume only fishing. Yeah. I don't know how to explain how I feel anymore. <laughs> I know. I, I knew this would kind of catch you. I probably should have prepped you for this one so that you could think about it a little bit, but I knew this would be your your response. Is this like, can you give it, me? Like, I can't explain the physical response my body is having to this discussion. Like, it's making me frustrated. Like, you literally make your chest and, your chest tighten up. And I'm like, man, I, I have wanted so bad to yeah. post a YouTube video about this. Yeah. But like, what benefit? Like, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I commented on Andrew Hayes. What is, post- what is the benefit? So here's where we can have benefit because we can have long form discussion, even though people but probably won't listen benefit, to it. What is the benefit, really? The you benefit know, of posting videos on my channel is that I then have an opinion, so then I am relatable, so then I'll get views that will kickstart my channel that'll get more views on other videos. Yes. That's the only it, reason people are doing this. Yes. Yes. I've never so seen like. Anything. 
pocket. Yeah. It's it's the only reason, and then they'll just keep building on that for the yeah. sake of doing that. Yeah. Because in because we like the drama. Admittedly, like people enjoy to see other people's perspectives in the drama. Okay, well, this pro said this about this pro, and this pro said this about this, and these guys said this about Wolf having 14 lives. I don't care anymore. Yeah. But like, I wanted to post a video that's like, okay, there's too many live scopes. And then I'm like, wait, I don't really care how many live scopes you have. Yeah. Like, I'm tired of hearing about how many live scopes people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, I just hate the culture right now and I, I was gonna post a video okay i'll i'll put this up here because okay. i told you this go ahead like, go ahead go ahead because then what I'm what saying, i gotta say is just hilarious so i mean go ahead what i i told you this the other day i'm like i think my new brand on my channel i don't care pursue your passion you do whatever you want with your passion <laughs> my new thing is like you do whatever you want be to be positive passion. like enjoy what your life is like spread positivity Mm -hmm. right whatever it is be positive enjoy your life enjoy what you're doing mm -hmm. like be positive mm -hmm. spread the positivity mm -hmm. don't get sucked into the toxicity mm -hmm. and it's very hard when you have yep. this device right here and you're looking at instagram and you see something and you're like oh man like yep. that kind of ticks me off and, and that device makes some people feel like they're 10 foot tall because they can say whatever they want to behind a screen that's also and a then, thing Someone someone posted something silly about forward-facing sonar being the very first person ever to post a video with it. So I commented, like, trying to be nice about it. Like, hey, you were definitely an OG. Uh, you can't stay out of it. You can't stay out of it, and it's disgusting. That's all. You ready for mine? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun, buddy. It's going to be a little bit of a monologue, but it's going to be fun. All right. So... Here's my, so everybody wants an opinion, right? Everybody, everybody has to have an opinion and in the platform that is social media gives everybody an opinion, even people who don't need an opinion. Cause there's some dumbass people out there who should not be able to say anything and put it into the world. That does not mean that I don't believe in free speech. I think every person should say what they want to say, but I don't think that every person should have a megaphone to say what they want to say. Now, that being said, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't give, I literally do not care. I don't even think you understand how little I care about your opinion about what I'm doing. If you don't like the, the brand that I use, if you don't like the, the people I associate myself with, I, if you don't like the fact that I just use pure fishing product, I don't care because two things. Number one, my bills mean more than your feelings and my happiness means more than your feelings. OK, so those two things are the first important thing that you need to check at the door before you even start. Second thing is the other day, this is going to put a lot of it in perspective. Nobody has perspective of what actually matters because everybody is on the Internet arguing about stuff that literally does not matter whatsoever at all. It's not even funny how much it doesn't matter. Forward facing sonar doesn't matter. Companies knocking off other companies. Baits do not matter. Bass fishing doesn't matter. It doesn't. I'm sorry. Like in the grand scheme of things, like it doesn't matter. And let me tell you why. So the other day I'm fishing and I had was trying to make a fishing video and I was having a great day because I love fishing. Fishing is my favorite thing. It's my passion. It's what gets me out of bed in the morning. I absolutely love it. It makes me happy. So I'm out there fishing, but I had to have a conversation with a guy. Um, and the conversation was about how we could raise money to pay for the funeral of a kid who was actively dying of stage four brain cancer in the hospital. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that matters. There's people dying of cancer and you're going to argue with somebody online about who knocked off whose bait. There's kids who are starving to death in third world countries like Haiti, where both of my sisters are from, where literally if they didn't come from there, that they would have either starved to death or been sold into sex slavery and turned into sex slaves. And you are arguing with somebody on the internet about dots on a screen. Fishing is what we do to have fun and to enjoy ourselves. Why have we turned it into this toxic shithole online? <laughs> like, stop, people. Put your perspectives like get a perspective. Like I would implore every person to go to the cancer 
floor on a, at a hospital or go to a chemotherapy room and sit down and have a conversation with somebody. I would implore anybody to go to a third world country and see how people live because it's not like this here. This is the, our like nice little cubicle world that we live in. And everybody's like, Oh, I, you know, I go to work, I work nine to five. And blah, blah. I mean, like, like the problem, but the only, the only caveat is that the people that are posting these things, like that is their enjoyment. dude. Like that's, what's so disgusting about some of it is like their priorities lie in the, <laughs> in it's this what, discussion it's because they'd have no real problems. It's because they've never had a perspective shift or an ego death. I mean, like, here's the problem is like people's egos are bigger than bigger than you could ever imagine because everybody thinks that their problems are the biggest problems in the world. And the thing is, is that most people's problems revolve around stupid, insignificant things. Like I'm in an argument online with a guy about forward facing sonar. Like people literally look at the world around you. <laughs> <laughs> politicians are taxing you to death. They're embezzling money through foreign wars. They're feeding us the disease and selling us the cure. Health insurance is so expensive. People literally cannot afford to go get health care. There's people actively dying of cancer. There's kids starving to death. There's people milking welfare while other people need it. And we literally are online arguing about dots on a damn screen. It literally bothers me to my core that people have such short sighted perspectives and such giant egos that we cannot tear down the wall and realize that this is a sport or a recreation or a hobby that brings joy to people's lives and like you know what i want like at the end of the day you, you know what i want more than anything i don't give a shit about forward facing sonar about berkeley baits about fucking whatever else i just want to go fishing with my dad one more time and enjoy the process of like being outside with him but i can't do that because he died of cancer like that's where my problem is at right now like that's where my mental state's at like my ego's gone like i don't i mean i I don't, I don't even know if I have an ego anymore because like, I understand like everybody's going through some stuff and like, why can't we just leave fishing the way that it is, which is this beautiful thing where we can all go outside and be together. And like me and Josh were talking today, me and Josh are literally from two totally different sides of the tracks, dude. But through fishing, I've created a lifelong buddy. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, the problem is it's unavoidable. Like the, the culture of bass fishing is unavoidable if you pay attention to bass fishing. Yeah. And it's toxic. And no, Keith, I didn't get way off topic. That is directly on topic because it all feeds back into the fact that this is the problem. Keith, and I'm not getting after your ass in particular. I'm just getting after asses in all across the board. Like, this is like, I'm looking, like, I think you got to understand, like, I can't look at that and even care because, like, I see the world for what it is. It's like, it's, 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 it's Thanos made the statement perfectly in Marvel. I, too, am burdened with knowledge. And I'm burdened with, like, the fact that, like, when I get a call from my mom saying that a bill collection agency is calling her, threatening to sue her over a bill of her deceased husband who died of cancer that's $500. Like, boys, how do we? How do you hear that and then want to argue with somebody online about fishing? Like, I want to go fishing to have fun and to, like, forget all of this stuff. And I do, and that's what I do. That's where I go to, to forget all of these things and, like, not have a total mental breakdown and want to kill people. Like... <laughs> But like, like, it's just like legitimately like, I just don't get it. And so, yeah, fishing culture online is toxic and shitty and I don't like it, but it is what it is. I mean, Josh said it best. You just can't think about it. And I really don't like, but I just did want to have this discussion because when it does come up, it like, this is like exactly directly where my mind goes immediately because you do go online and it's just arguments and comment sections and like people don't think outside of their their little egotistical bubble that they live in. And it, it amazes me. All right. That's all I've got to say about that. Anything else, Ben? Yeah. I just, you just can't avoid it. I mean, like you just either don't go on social media or you just, I, I like literally don't know how to avoid the, this weird culture that's in bass fishing right now. Like, no, I don't either. And I don't know that there is a way, right? Because there's too many people that care about, 
it's it's a weird it's a weird thing because even if you the, don't all of the comment section is like trying to re the the comment section is even trying to redirect me here. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hi, like, how you doing? Like you know, uh, even if you don't care about tournament bass fishing, like everyone seems to have an opinion about forward facing, or they want to compare their fish size, or they want like it's just a very weird. Um, like you can't get away from it in the fishing world. And yeah. You mentioned it best, dude. You want to be in the world that is um, creek fishing adventures. Absolutely, and John. Like, that is, yeah, yeah. That is, um, like, what is that? Who are the people? Uh, the husband and wife. Like, I want to be in that world yeah. where it just doesn't really seem to matter as much. Like, I understand my audience is skewed towards like maybe people learning how to be a better angler as opposed to like enjoying the experience on the water. So I'm naturally like in that audience on social media, but I just don't understand. Yeah. No, I don't either. If that makes was, sense. I think one of the best comments is Johnny here said the human condition has changed because of social media. 100%. Like it's kind of crazy. Like we literally, the human condition has changed because of social media. Like, like people don't interact the same way. Like, I mean, it's just the simple fact that I, I I can't even get going again. But anyway, like it just it is. I mean, like people don't interact way the same way anymore. I mean, kids these days talk as if though they talk in like social media terms. Like and like people interact differently than it, it's just crazy. Like oh, and don't worry, I have I've spoken my mind. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's just like, it's amazing to me when I bring up real topics about real things, about things that actually matter, and people quit watching the live stream, or they don't want you to say things, and they want you, oh, you're off topic, or oh, you're this, or you're that. No, I'm just realistic is what I am. Like, I see the world for what it is. Like, the day my dad died of cancer, and even before that, like, dude, the system is so broken. Like, you guys literally, unless you've been through it and seen it, which I know some of you guys have, you just don't even understand how broken the entire system really is. And, like, like, and the thing is, is, is I can't not let it bother me because when you watch your dad die of cancer because the insurance company wouldn't approve the bridging drug for him to be able to go from one chemo to another, which got it to the point where the, the cancer was out of control because a person at a insurance company was the one who made a decision that is not a doctor or a medical professional at all made a decision to do that. Like, like I don't think you people understand where I'm coming from. Like, Yes, it does bother me. And like, yes, I do let it bother me because that is what deeply bothers me. But anyway, it's broken to a point. I know how we need to fix it. I can't discuss how we need to fix it online because I'll probably get like fucking whatever they call it, deleted or, you know, whatever, demonetized and all that. So I'm not going to, we're off of this topic. But anyway, underrated, overrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys, I could get going. Underrated overrated Musk did you see bass and beers oh musky yeah muskies i mean they're pretty cool they're kind of overrated but they're pretty cool yeah it's like a pike it's like a big it's a big pike to me I'm yeah like, yeah that's cool like it bites and it fights hard but like it's a pike yeah it's yeah. just a big pike <laughs> it's just a big pie you know like really they are like what is like anatomically it's essentially the same animal one's just bigger and one's a smaller right yeah i mean i guess if you're if you are a trophy like that like that is a goldfish like that can be your target and that's the cool part of it but like to me to it, when it bites i've caught a couple now where it's just like yeah it's just a, it's just a pike yeah i mean the first one or two, though, you like you got to get it out of the way because it's a fish of ten thousand casts. Yeah, but like it's just a bike. Yeah, I like them, but I don't like them. So I like them. I like mm. the problem with muskies that I've found. So I'm going to say that they're overrated. To they're over okay. The the like musky fishing 
So, like, when I say musky fishing, okay, I know, like, that's a really kind of weird thing because, like, I've had this discussion before, like, what is musky fishing? But, like, people who go out and throw, like, 10-inch baits that, like, them triple medusas and, like, figure eight every single cast and do that, it's like bow hunting, right? It's like, that's what they it's like. like swim bait fishing. Yeah, it's like swim bait fishing or bow hunting or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like they that's what they like to do. That's cool. Go let them do that. Me personally, every muskie I've ever caught, I've caught on conventional tackle with bass baits. And I just know where they live and I go and catch them. The biggest one I ever caught was like 51 inches. And I caught it literally on a on a, like a hair jig, like offshore hair jig, like a shuttlecock. Like throw it out there, rip it off the bottom, and we just found a bunch of us catching them. It's really fun. Um, but like the thing is, is like when you would get them next to the boat and get them in a net, like they're not hardy at all. And so like the first yeah. one I ever called, if like you I mishandle call, one, if you mishandle one and you put it on the, the internet. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. They're going to go insane. But even then past that, it's just like, they're not hardy. And so I didn't no, know that. So like the first one I picked up and then like we put it back in the water and it took us like 15 minutes to revive it and get it going. And it finally swam off and hell, I don't know if it survived or not. I know it swimmed off, but it's like, that's the thing. Like the smaller ones are okay. Like those 30, 30, 20 to 30 inches, dude, they're pissing vinegar. Like you can't hurt them damn things. Like I've thrown them up in kayaks, unhook them, toss them in the water. They shoot off like a rocket, but there's something about when they get big like that. And from my understanding is they literally just like exhaust themselves to death trying to fight you. And so like the fight, as fun as it is, like that's why you got to use that really big gear. Is because you like hook them, hook them, crank them in, and get them in the net, and then get them unhooked because they'll literally exhaust themselves to death trying to get away from you, which is so crazy. What did I say about a musky is their teeth aren't as close together as a pike, so you don't lose as many baits to musky. I dude, I've had musky blow frogs in half, take spinner baits from me, bladed <laughs> jigs from me, uh, buzz baits from me. So I don't know what you're talking about. I, I, landed, little... I landed my biggest musky on a uh, crankbait on Lake St. Clair on 10 pound test line. And it took That's me forever bad. to reel that thing in. And like you said, dude, it's like not hardy. Everyone was telling me I needed to fight it faster, but like I don't know how you fight a fish faster like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's Which like is, you get. And you're like, oh, okay, now yeah. I gotta try to save your life. Mouth which, to mouth. <laughs> which really interesting. I love this. The big ones are like fat guys trying to run upstairs. They wear me <laughs> off fast. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. But like, no, what's funny is like there's a segment of fishing is like you should play that fish more. And then there's this whole other segment of fishing where they're like, you need to get that thing in faster. And it's like, which one do I do? Like, which one's right? You know what I mean? That goes back to like, what is fishing? Fishing is your anecdotal experience on the water. It's how you have fun. Like, that's what it's all about. Oh, God, that's funny. All right. Trout fishing, overrated, underrated. I don't do it, so I don't have an answer, but. I've had fun doing it. I mean, I have a ton of fun doing it. I, I've no, I'm fishing for all stalkers. I've not d done any <laughs> digs outdoors. Play with it faster. I uh, love it. Uh, you play with it too fast. Um, you might hurt yourself. Um, I've had fun. I've had fun catching trout. I I enjoy them. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think it's really cool. I'm catching all stalkers, right? You know, I've not done any of the fly fishing stuff yet or done any of that. I may dabble with it a little bit just to play with it to say that I've done it, experience that. Because at the end of the day, here's my deal. I love anything with gills that I can catch. Like, I know I just said muskies are overrated, whatever. I like catching muskies. I mean, if I have an opportunity to catch one, I'm going to catch one. If, it, if a striper comes up blowing up on a topwater, I'm going to throw a topwater at it. If bluegills are eating, you know, breadcrumbs, we're going to catch bluegill. But I think the trout for me, the funnest part about the trout is just like the places that you go and then the ability to like see them and cast to them and watch them like interact. The water and yes. Yeah. The, the trout is fun because it is, it's like reading the water. And then two, if you know where a trout are at, you could also probably figure out where giant bass are at. And like those two things are like, they're fun together. And so, yeah, we're not going to say much more about that, but yeah, that just is what that is. So I, I have fun. It, uh, and they jump like crazy. Did you hook one? They're like, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've not really done it. I've caught a couple accidentally, but like never really done it. See, I um, think the steelhead thing up near you would be fun. Yeah. And the rivers Thad does, Thad does a steelhead and loves yeah. it. I see. I, um, think, I think that would be fun. A part of what takes me back to just like, obviously, I just like catching fish. So, like, I'll use forward facing if they're. What? Is that a dog? 
Um, I use forward facing. <laughs> Every time you go to talk, he says, Arr. I use forward facing because I like to catch bass. But there's part of me that likes to turn that thing off and just go read water, like read the bank and uh -huh. yeah, read the docks and that. Yeah. Well, no, and that's like to me and Josh were talking about it today. Like I jokingly titled my last video "No Forward Face" and so on. Our did. That's why I put the little winky face on there. It's just me being funny. Like I'm like because in the video I say like. Alex, why do you people ask? Why do you suck at forward facing sonar? Well, because I would rather throw a spinnerbait in a river as to eat some days. Like it's it's a haha -ha joke, like a hee hee ha ha, you know, punch your buddy in the arm and everybody laughs and has a good time. Um, you know, I laugh, my wife laughs, the toaster laughs. I shot the toaster, it was a great day. Um, but um, like I, I, I I'm with you, dude. Like, I think the way that I like to fish is just shallow current, rivers, you know, flipping, frogging, that kind of stuff. That's the way I like to catch I mean fish. I like the variety of it all. So, like, some yeah. days I like to go out and, and scope them and throw yeah. an ice boat. And then the next day I want to get up shallow and throw a, a swim jig or fish yeah. on docks. Like, I love the variety of the fishing. Yeah, me too. And I think that's what trout fishing is just another variety of something that I can go have fun with. You know what I mean? And it's like, dude, because it truly is a completely different pace. Like, it is a completely different gear shift for me. And, like, the trout fishing, I mean, it's a five-foot medium light rod let me see this dog let me see this mug oh he says let me out of here i mean come on now bud he's a cutie what you doing buddy what you doing buddy he says, let me out he said i'm sad i want to get out of I, here i was muted but that's a doll with its pants down just so anyone sees it doesn't get any missed information here God, all right um <laughs> I don't know what, the dog's about. what? I'll hear it back. I gotta let the dog out. Oh, okay. He's got to let the dog out. Um, I don't know what to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, how are y'all doing? If you have any questions, leave them over in the comment section. I tend not to read comments, but I've read a few tonight because I'm trying to learn how to multitask a little bit better. My ADHD is not all over the, the place. But um, yeah, pull my fingers, got it right. Just fish the way it makes you happy. Absolutely. I think that that's the most important part. Like, it's just, I, I, I think it's just so important for everybody right now. It's just like find joy in life because life is so short and there are more important things to worry about than people's opinions of what you like to go do. Like, unless it's something illegal or awful, like do whatever you want to do. Like, I really just, I don't care. So yeah, but I do like pull my finger. That's a, that's a good username. That's a, I love a good fart joke. That's a good fart joke right there, but yeah. Hey, Fishing with Gramps, you're in here, buddy. Um, me and Fishing with Gramps, we're going to send it again next week on his live stream. I was supposed to be on there with him, but ended up having some echoing issues. Uh, I don't know what happened. Like, uh, it was weird. Gramps was getting an echo of himself. I was good in my ears, and I don't know what happened, but we're going to send it hard next week. We're going to talk about river smallmouth fishing. So I want to give you guys some of my experiences on the rivers with river smallmouth fishing and what I know about it because – I caught some big old brown fish in my day in moving water. So I, I enjoy it, but yeah, I know it is. So bow leg fishing. I like that username too. You said agree 100%. It's unfortunate. People have to go through tragedy to put life into perspective, but more experience it to do so. Great show. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, dude. I mean, you know, and the thing was, is like, it does just take a little bit of, I mean, like it does, like it takes a little bit of, um, so my first experience realizing like how good I had it was the first time I ever went to Haiti, um, which was like 2008-ish. So I was probably like 14, 13, 14, went down there on a mission trip. I've been there four times, and both of my sisters are from there. And so, I mean, when you go down there and see people that are starving to death and kids who have worms, like, you know, like stomach worms so bad that they're boring out of holes in their faces, like – really puts you into perspective. And then the next one was working at a hospital for six years where I was on a code team where literally I watched, I can't tell you how many people die and it puts it in perspective. And then the last one was, I mean, when dad got cancer and then passed away from cancer. I mean, it's, it's an ego death, ladies and gentlemen, more than I think than, than you could ever imagine. But anyway, uh, Hunter Nixon, favorite Fritz side color other than blaze. I actually don't like blaze in the Fritz side that much. Um, there is one, Yes, I like special red crawl. There's a red and yellow one that I really like. I like spring crawl and then that Kentucky blue. Kentucky blue is really good. It's like kind of slept on, especially in clear water. 
Um, and then honey, I think there's one called honeydew. It's like kind of a goldish, it's like a black back with a kind of goldish beige sides that in the, the Fritz I biggin. And if you've not thrown the Fritz I biggin, you need to, it's freaking awesome. Like it's so good. You thrown the Fritz I biggin, Benjamin? No, no, really? No, I don't really throw a Fritz side at all. Yeah, really? I like yeah. it, especially this time of year. I should. Um, I don't know why. I think for me, when I got off the large mouth thing for a little while, like I just went strictly small mouth. Like I just couldn't get them to go on the front side very good. So yeah. I like <clears throat> kind of got off of it. But it seems like, especially the river stuff, you could catch small mouth or large mouth. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I do really well with them in current but i tell you dude like a frit that fritz i big and just like on big flats this time of year as those fish start to move up dude i love it all right it um, kind of reminds me of like that elbow i throw like it's a bigger body bait looks like a bluegill i mean it probably only dives what three to five foot so it probably yeah. is a pretty similar thing yeah so. yeah all right this is actually our last one because we did sean o'malley earlier but this is going to be a fun one because i'm like okay We'll just get into it. Underrated, <laughs> overrated, scent on baits. Hmm. Typically doesn't make a big difference. I think for smallmouth, it's like it can be a triggering factor. It can be a bigger triggering factor. Um, for largemouth, not as much so but still kind of i would say it's i would say it's underrated but what it give me give me an anecdotal experience you've had with scent where you went damn that really worked oh on smallmouth it's like a deal well particular maybe it's not scent maybe it's something coming off the bait off the max scent Max scent is real for smallmouth, though. Like, mm -hmm. I've seen it where I'll throw my confident smallmouth bait on a drop shot right next to my buddy who I gave a flatworm because I just wanted him to catch some. And it's like, I'm not getting bit, and he's getting bit every time he throws it in there. Mm -hmm. Almost the exact same color. And then mm -hmm. Max scent looks like garbage on a hook. Mm -hmm. Like, pff, falls mm -hmm. down, doesn't sit out off the hook, doesn't have great action. Mm -hmm. He crushed me. Mm -hmm. Then I've had other times where it's color related and like you could throw whatever you want and I'll throw it out there. He digs out torches and I have an echo from last night. It rubs the bait fuel on its winter again. <laughs> you see that bait fuel injector? Like a turkey baster? Yeah, it's a, no, it's like a it's like a syringe you can inject bait fuel into your lure with. Damn. That's a lot. Yeah. So let me tell you my little my little shtick on scent. So, you know, I did that Berkeley Science Symposium down in Houston, Texas. Yeah. And Mark Sexton was in there talking about scent. And he said that they've done thousands of tests. They got thousands of data points on scent. And he said scent is the only uh, sense that a bass has that goes directly to their brain. So, like, when a, a bass has an olfactory system and they do smell things. And, like, when they smell something – it goes directly like into like the the brain, like right into like the nervous system, right into the whole system and can make them make decisions on whether they want to eat things or not, or if they run away for something or try to go track something down. And he said, what was fascinating is they did all kinds of different scents. And one thing that amazed me was he said, like with small mouth, like you said, scent, absolutely 100 percent matters like they smell things and go to it or they smell things just, and go away from it let's talk hair jig just real quick because this is like another one that really has stuck with me over the years of like does scent matter or does it not right like i think it was caleb that was up here someone was up here we we're fishing hair jigs next to each other and i'm out fishing them quite a bit well i get this fish or whoever i was fishing with is fishing this hair jig and it's coming back to the boat and you can watch smallmouth pretty much track a hair jig in a lot of the water we fish. Mm -hmm. It would track that hair jig and swim off. Well, then I'd throw in there and you get bit. Well, you could see like these fish trail off their hair jig, and then you can throw that max scent one back in behind it and get bit mm -hmm. when they're not throwing max scent. Like you can watch them bird dog it down. Like they'll they'll like turn around to find it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and then I'm like, oh my God, like that's yeah. that is the deal. Yeah. So so that's what Mark was saying. But then he was talking about large mouth. And Hunter, this may sway your decision. He said more than anything with a large mouth, what they noticed was it wasn't scent that determined whether they ate something or not, but it was scent that determined whether it even got near it or not. Like large mouth use their sense of smell more as a, like a precautionary like sense than a hunting sense. And like he was saying that like, he said like gasoline, they didn't even give a shit. Like they were like, whatever. Like it's, they, it was an, it was a non sequitur to them. They didn't even care. It was there, but like suntan lotion and like, like sunscreen dude, he said it scared the absolute crap out of bass. And he said, so he says more than anything, what he thinks is like scent is a good way to mask our scent. So like we put things on baits, like our oils, our suntan oil, my beard oil, our body wash, hand wash, all of those things. Like when we touch baits, those things get on those baits and those bass can smell them like 100%. They actually said that a bass can smell a thousand times better underwater than a dog can smell on land. Like, yeah, obviously it's not a one-to-one, but like, like that is like in, like in a number to put in a number for you guys. And he said, like, you know, they were dropping, like, micrograms of stuff in water, and bass were able to detect that it was there. But, again, for, like, the small mouth, it was a hunting thing, where for the large mouth, it was a, it was like a, like, hey, I'm, do I want to jack with that or do I not? Do I want to run from that or do I want to go try to get it? Like, it was more of a precautionary thing versus, like, a hunting thing, which is just very interesting. And the whole other thing was, like, he said, like, oil-based scents don't work at all. Right, like they oil and water don't mix. Oil has a a higher buoyancy rate than or a higher um, molecular rate than than water does. So literally, oil floats on top of water. He said, but what oils probably can do is mask our scent. Like that's the thing is like it's with large mouth, it's about masking our scent and not letting them smell us. And then with small mouth, it's about literally just introducing something to them that smells like something they want to eat. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. So all that being said, I think scent is highly underrated. Um, I Here's my thought process behind it. If it's the last thing, if it's the first thing that a bass uses to determine whether it eats or not, then cool, I've got it. If it's the last thing a bass uses to determine it, whether to eat or not, I have it. So like, if it's what keeps a 10-pounder from eating or not, I would rather have it and get the 10-pounder to eat than not have it and not. Like I would rather it not have any effect and have it than have a ton effect and not have it. It's like Jesus. <laughs> where you, I don't even know where you're gonna go with this one. <laughs> I don't even know where you're gonna go with this one. I'm sorry, we'll leave it alone. It's like heaven, like it's like it's like you would rather believe in Jesus than to get there and go, wow, I've really jacked this up. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I've heard people say that before. Ha ha. Um, but no, yeah, I, I mean, it is, it's wild, dude. Like that Berkeley science symposium was one of the funnest things that I ever did just because I got to see in here and like, it's just, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? So, but well, that was underrated, overrated, Benjamin. I love underrated, overrated. You got any more? You want to stick another one on here? Or are, you, are you satisfied? There were a couple that I was like, yeah, we could talk about that, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we should talk about them. Probably. Why? No, give me one no, at least. I don't. Give me one. Um. Um. Talk also, to me about that gulp. Talk also, to me about that gulp stuff. Also, gulp. Gulp is so in order of like. Potency and effectiveness, gulp, max scent, power bait. Because <laughs> I love that dog. Gulp, <laughs> gulp and max scent are both scent technologies. Power bait is a taste technology. So power bait gets it in their mouth and it tastes like something they want to eat, both some small mouth and large mouth, where max scent and gulp are your scent technologies. They disperse a scent cloud. Gulp is phenomenally more powerful than max scent is, and they only created max scent to have an in between because gulp dries out. So, like, if you were to run down the lake, your gulp bed will like literally dry to like a little nugget, and you can rehydrate it, but it just takes some time. Um, whereas, whereas max scent is kind of in between where you get like that durability and like like a ability to run across the lake 
with power bait, but also get a gulp like scent cloud. It actually moves. Gulp lures are like, like you might as well just put a hard piece of hard plastic on there. Uh huh. Hey, dude, it's all scent. This is proof that I mean that is what that bait is is scent. And like, yes. dude, one thing that blew my mind is when they were talking about salt water. They literally like, and that's the thing is we 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 think in terms of bass. Right, we think in terms of largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass. That's what we like. Have a whatever, you know what I mean? Um, but like the thing is, is like when you talk about like saltwater and trout fishing, like dude, gulp in saltwater is literally like a cheat code, and like gulp and power bait in trout, like that's why some trout waters like literally does not allow it because of how effective that it actually is, and that's what like they were talking about is like in bass fishing. I mean, it is very, very, very effective, but like in salt water and in other areas with other fish, it is hyperly even more like twenty times x more successful than than something else. like it's crazy. So, yeah, gulp fascinates me. I have um. It should be here in a couple of days. I got something coming to the house that's very special. You can't get it in America. That's a gulp technology that I can't oh, wait to play with. Yeah. 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 I'm excited about it. I because according to uh according to Proc now, who is the lead chemist over at Berkeley, this one particular thing is the most effective thing that they've ever made. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. So we're going to it creates a creamy that creates like a jelly mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah any more any more that you want to go over yeah we'll just put it out there um and this is more so the tournament side of things i don't care um ben milliken and his success so far i'm interested to see what's going to happen this year i'm not going to give him underrated or overrated i think Coming into the season, he was very underrated as a YouTuber, but I think a lot of people also respected who he was. Um, I've been very impressed with the entire rookie class in the Elite Series so far. Just the way they've handled themselves yeah. and performed. Like, I think five of the nine rookies, or maybe even more than that, are in the top 15 in AOI mm -hmm. points already. It's cool. It's like wild. It's like wild to see. Yeah, no. Um, I said he was either going to kick ass or – like crash and burn spectacularly and he's kicking ass and so dude he it's what he wants to do that was his dream he used youtube as a way to get the finances he need to chase his dream and he's chased his dream and is now actualizing it and so i love that for anybody in whatever it has to be like i don't care if it's football fishing badminton art I mean, sculpting. I mean, I don't care. Whatever it is, dude. Like, that dude is loving his life and, and enjoying, from what I can see from the outside looking in, and kicking ass. And so, that it is really cool. Um, it's interesting, like, so, like, the the rookie, like, the top ten on the last event, like, every single one of those dudes were rookies, right? Except for... Five, Gus five of the top ten were, were rookies. Okay, dude, that's wild. Like, so, what is that? What yeah, is that? Nine rookies. So there's nine rookies, and five of the top ten were rookies. So it's wild. So what does that mean? What's your what is your opinion and perspective on that? What does that mean? That they're hammers. Is there any other factor that plays into it? No. Okay. These, yeah, I mean, you can say forward facing. Yeah. But these pros have had access to forward facing since I had it in 2015. Yeah. Like, if you didn't learn it from 2015 to now, like you can't say that it's forward facing these guys are hammers you got to know where to look when to look why to be there what you're doing with these fish to get them to bite like trey mckinney won that tournament not because of forward facing but because he found an area that was on pressure by other pros because he found a school and a bunch of fish that were were eating and were bigger than everyone else's they're just well, hammers. i think i think to it i I think forward facing is only a piece of a much bigger, more complex puzzle of what makes these younger class so much better because these dudes, I mean, how old's that kid who won? What's his name? I'm sorry. I Trey hate McKinney I, turned 19, like a couple days before that event. Okay. So I just didn't want to like Trey McKinney, 19 years old. Okay. That dude, first of all, good job, bro. Congratulations. Badass. Number two, Trey, you're 19, bro. You're literally a decade younger than me. Actually, more than a decade younger than me. He grew up in a world with cell phones, 
and laptops and iPads. He grew up in a technology-based world where he consumed YouTube and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, where he had instant access to knowledge that I didn't even have instant access to at 19. Like that literally is how much the world has changed in the past 10 years. I'm 30. So like literally in the past 10 years, like even at 19, I didn't have the instant access to knowledge like he did. And so he's grown up in a world. He has instant access to knowledge. He can find anything he wants to on YouTube or some other platform. He can Google search anything he needs to know. And now AI is making it even easier to find information. I think what we're dealing with here is a generation of anglers who have been able to excel the learning curve for bass fishing faster than any generation before them. And I think even the next generation coming up is going to be able to do it even faster than they did it just because they can, they can go find what they need and go on the water and apply it. And if they've yeah, got the means and the time and the money, then they can go and apply what they're learning in a, an exceptional, exceptionally faster way than anybody else can. I'm not taking anything away from them. I'm, no, I'm just no. I know it goes the beyond generation. the electronics, right? Like it goes oh. beyond technology. And I think, yeah, when you said they can understand like, and learn these like, different things. That's it's right. like the next generation of doctors are going to be better than the generation of doctors before, just because of their ability to access knowledge in a much easier way than the, than the generation of doctors before. That's all I'm saying. Yes. I think you've had this group of guys Yeah, and we're not talking what we're facing. We're, I mean, I guess we are, we are, we're talking, we are. You've had this group of guys that have preached versatility. Ben Miller can put it best. You preach versatility your entire career when it comes to learning new techniques, whether it's Nico rig, whether it's whatever it might be. And then over the last four years, you've decided that you just want to have a stance against this new piece of tech and not learn it, not be versatile. And now you're getting beat by guys that are more versatile. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Like you look at Mark Rose learning side imaging. Steve Kennedy, which was on the Zeldane podcast, talked about how he's an engineer by trade. Like he was researching side imaging in 2007 before a lot of these guys even had it on their boat because mm -hmm. he was curious about the tech. Like this is not new. It's just about these guys' ability and, and lack of ability to be versatile. They're just not being versatile anglers. And it's not just a rookie class either. Like you're seeing it from some of the middle aged pros too, like Jason Christie and these other guys that are still continuing to be competitive. It's about your willingness to be versatile and compete. Absolutely. Absolutely. And these, I, these young kids are just phenomenal, phenomenal fishermen. Like yeah. Logan Parks cut those cut his learning curve down so much. The kids started fishing. I didn't know this about Logan. Started fishing when he was a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. Alex, I mean, he's been fishing for six and a half years. Well, and it's again, it's access to information that we never had before in a way that we never had it before. I mean, like, dude, just think about all. The, I mean. Benya Outdoors said it the best. It's like it's less trial and error for the next generation gets the benefits from what the hundreds of OGs on YouTube are willing to give tips. And I mean, like, I mean, just think about all the information there is about bass fishing out there. Like you can cut your learning curve about so much stuff, especially if you're just dedicated to it. I mean, like, dude, do you know how much I've learned about cold plunging and about sauna just because I've been dedicated enough to listen to the podcast and read what I need to read? Like, I think it's super interesting. One of the things that they talked about in this interview with Steve was like their trip to Clear Lake when he, I, I don't know if he won that. I think he won the tournament on Clear Lake with swim baits, but like you didn't even have access to getting, to buying the swim baits before when they were out there in 2007 or 2006. And now you can buy them on Tackle Warehouse. Now you can buy them on Tackle Warehouse. They now didn't even have access to them. Yeah. 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 They didn't even have access to the baits. So he didn't I love that dog. <laughs> he's my favorite um, dog. He's just being a whiner. Uh, you didn't even have access to the baits, let alone access to the information now he was throwing them. So like he had to learn how to throw them during the event. Yeah. Like in the so thing he's like, yeah, I bought three thousand dollars worth of baits before I even set foot on the water because I'd never even seen some of these lures or heard of them before. Yeah. Now it's like the OSP dice comes yeah. out and three like one guy has it in his boat and then before the tournament 
three other guys are able to order it from Japan and get it in their boat before they watch like, and watch five YouTube videos on, in Japanese about how to fish the lure and then find four more in a, in English from somebody who's already bought the. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is like we have these conversations like there's people like we laugh about it but like we always say like oh it's going to be compared to some Japanese bait you've never heard of in obscurity but that's because like there's nothing that's that really obscure anymore because of the accessibility of everything nowadays like. I can order anything from any part of the world and have it at my front door within a few days if I want to. You know what I mean? Like money is only the the only object in our way of getting things done. You know what I mean? And then things too, like like the accessibility of information. Like there are people walking now like the, into doctor's offices knowing more than the doctor does because even the doctor is not schooled on certain things that the person has been able to school themselves on in a way that makes them fairly efficient in understanding what it is like the access to information now is phenomenal. Like you got to think about like Joe Rogan, think about all the topics that Joe Rogan has covered that now people are like obsessive over and have an immense amount of knowledge just because Graham Hancock and the younger dries, like, you know, 10 years, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that was an obscure idea. Now it's like a pretty widely held and accepted hypothesis, right? You know, um, nutrition and certain nutritional things that people are doing now, you know, like, I love it. Look, <laughs> everybody listening on podcast form, Ben's dog is laid on its back, spread eagle, biting his own paw because he's so bored. Ben, you got to go play with that dog, buddy. Got to go play with that dog. But yeah, but like at the end of the day, man, I mean, I think is that's what I'm saying more than anything. I think forward facing is a piece of a very small piece to a bigger puzzle of just because it still takes dedication. It still takes hard work. It still takes the want and the drive to do it. But then when you can combine, when you combine the same want that Gerald Swindle had when he began his career 30 years ago with the advances in technology, the instant access to information, the ability to get anything that you need when you need it within a couple of days, any bait, anytime, anywhere, better tech, faster boats, better trucks, better nutrition, better workout routines. I mean, everything is better than it was 30 years ago. And I think when you combine that want that Gerald had at the beginning of his career, or any pro at the beginning of the career 30 years ago, Kevin Van Dam, when he began 30 years ago, you you combine that drive with everything that is modern, it in results in these kids that are coming out here doing what they're doing well, now. Anyone that's coming through the Bassmaster Opens yeah. now has to be super well-versed on everything because now there's pros trying to get back in through the Opens, so you have to beat the pros, yep. and then you have to beat the other guys with that drive. And, like, you just – it's going to keep – like, I would – this is going to be – a dumb hot take but it's a real hot take like because every year the Bassmaster Elite Series are turning over and the worst guys are getting fed back into the feeder program mm. like you're going to have to be the best of the best of the best in about five years in the Elite Series it's going to be all guys that are just like you have to be constantly changing and learning. Like you're not, you're going to see this changing to the guard. Like if they don't keep protecting these guys. Yeah. And dude, and I love that intensity. Cause like it was me and Bethany were talking about it the other day. I was like, this is why I would suck as a pro because I would lose with a smile on my face. If I could catch him frogging like John Cox was doing. Cause I just don't have the passion to win like that. Like I like winning. I'm a very competitive person. Like I'll come through your throat, but all at the same time, like, I will lose with a smile on my face. I mean, I did it last year during River Wars. I got on a frog bite, and I lost with a smile on my face. I came in second by a quarter of an inch, and I tried my damnedest to catch up with the guy, but I lost with a smile on my face because I was catching fish, dude. Like, it was awesome. It was fun. You know what I mean? And, it, it, and it's just that. Guys, that competition, like, this doesn't happen in other sports. Like, what technology is it going to improve in, bas in, in basketball? Right, like once you have these skill sets, you can keep building on them. There's okay. totally new skill sets. Okay, Listen, so like hot take, forward facing sonar is is the is the steroids of every other sport. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just it's joking. a hot take. It's harder to be a professional bass fisherman to become a professional bass fisherman than it is to become a professional basketball player because a professional ba bass fisherman has to be other pros that have been relegated back down to the minors to then compete against them, beat them and make it into the professional. League. Also like, dude, professional bass <laughs> fishermen are 
are this it's a completely different thing because you're talking it's about totally like different, I mean you're talking about like physical freaks of nature like dudes who yeah, are seven yeah, it's one. totally not, different only so many people are born seven one you know what yeah. I mean like like it is but I think I do think that the next level of all of this is going to be nutrition and body health and taking care of yourself like dude yeah, you're like, seeing yeah, like dudes like Carl Jacobson and all these dudes, they're able to go because they're taking care of themselves better. And like, and then too, now here's, now I want to talk about this. Like we've gone off a rabbit hole. I don't really care. Sorry, yeah. No, you're good. I will say though, for me, I'm going to be a Randy Blockett real quick and check my fist at a cloud and be old man checking my fist at clouds for a second. Dude, augmented reality and and VR with Ford, that's too much for me. That literally is way too much for me. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm at a point, point where, like, me. I don't really even know what my point is, but I do feel like we're whatever, gonna the see rules, it, whatever the rules are, as long as you're playing within those rules, I can respect that. Okay. That, yeah, is, yeah. that is my opinion. I don't yeah. care what the rules are. As long as you're playing within those, I can respect that. 100%, yeah. Um, yeah, I get that, yeah. I don't disagree at all. But and, like augmented reality is just too far for me. But I know in five years there's gonna be dudes out there with VR glasses think, on. And it's gonna be a normal thing where your glasses are going to be goose going to be yeah, terrible with your units. I mean, you can do it. If you John B did it, all yeah. you'd have to do is buy the Apple Pro Vision, stream your Garmin from the Helm app, and there will be a delay or whatever, but you can do it. It's not. I don't think that difficult. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more pros doing it this year. Freaks me out, man. Freaks me out. Freaks me out. Yeah. Not just not because it's fishing, just because like I've watched Black Mirror. I've seen this episode. <laughs> like, I know. This I is know. this is the this is the precipice that I've been talking about. <laughs> where I mean, this is it, dude. Like this is what I find interesting is is the ability of it's a very unique situation. The pros struggle to have the ability or time to continue to learn all of these new techniques and technologies because they're trying to compete at the pro level with the pros. But then you have like this other group of guys that are trying to get into the pro level that have to learn all of these new things to make it there. So like a new technique or live scope, like these pros have two days on the water to fish a tournament. To, or to pre-fish for a tournament that's going to last three days, these non-pros have all of this other time where they can like learn all of these techniques to take with them. Into you know the what's pros. funny? It's a very interesting concept. You know, and you want to know what's funny? Is what was it? I said what two years ago. I think it was two years ago. I said that the next natural progression in 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 fishing technology is augmented reality. And people said I was stupid and it would never happen. And here we are literally two years later. Oh, yeah. We, we've been talking about this on the podcast for a long time, like being able to see your mapping in your glasses and be like, okay, I can see the channel swing on the bank, like just looking at the bank. It's, it's going to happen. Like that's not that far off, I don't think. God, it scares the shit out of me. I Dude, I, I think not that far off. I think – I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out into the ether, so that when this time comes, I can look back and go, "Told you so, you bunch of losers." <laughs> I think within five years, there will be a fishing electronic company or multiple that have software and hardware that is compatible with VR and AR headsets. Yeah, it's going to be coming. I think it's within the next three years. And I bet, Benya, I bet Benya's right. I bet Garmin already has it. Garmin's done with it. I think Garmin already has it and is done with it. I think it's in military tech, and I think that they're using it in military tech. I mean, they're already using it in, like, heads-up displays and fighter pilots, like, helmets. Like We're, they, seeing, like, we're seeing forward-facing sonar that can shoot out to, like, wild levels with the saltwater transducer. That's not a saltwater. That didn't come from salt water. Like Garmin had this on military tech, like probably oh, yeah. a long time ago. I'm telling you, I'll never forget. There was a guy I was trying to explain what 
what was before live scope pan optics i was trying to explain what pan optics was and he was like oh dude we had that on our destroyer he was in the navy he said we had that on a destroyer we could see like a we could see a whale from like a quarter mile away now their transducer was the size of a volkswagen right but like all all technology is now is is making it's it's taking big things and making them small enough and then making them affordable for the public and the thing is, is like, dude, it's coming. Like, it is coming so fast down the pop. We, we've we hit the bell curve, bro. Like, this is, it is the bell curve. Like, this, you know, for like, a I while. I don't know. And now I we're going. Know. I know, I know. And I don't know. Like, I've said this multiple times. As a, as a, people are saying that live scope isn't going to have an impact on fisheries, which I can see both sides of. Um, as just a fishing purist, I, I think I'd be okay if I know we're not, if we're like at the end of a lot of this tech, I know we're not, but like, what else do you need to catch fish? Like, have we not already pushed the limits of what we need to catch a bass? And at what point does it get regulated? And I don't think that it does as long as money is being pumped into these organizations from from these companies like Titleist has now limited the golf balls or excuse me, the PGA tour has limited the golf balls that the pros can use because they were hitting the balls too far. Like they were out driving courses. <laughs> Dude, right? like, here's what's wild. But tight, but the Titleist Titleist isn't dropping huge amounts of money into the organization. So it doesn't really hurt them. So it, so someone said something about drones. Pull my finger. Said something about drones. Here's the deal, guys. Here's what you don't understand. You're just not looking at outside of bass fishing, dude. Saltwater fishing is absolutely wild. The crap that they're using. I mean, dude, they got boats with autopilot that drive themselves. Like they can literally like target a fish, like hit a fish, and then they like their boat will auto drive and follow that fish around so that they can fish for it. Like it's absolutely crazy like outside of bass fishing the way that tech is going but like <laughs> the devil scope 666 transducer by carmen it's a game changer yeah no kidding I like this so, block of solar bag glasses have live scope in them and he's not telling anyone <laughs> absolutely 100 it is he's got the tech he's just holding on to it but yeah i mean dude it's i just don't even know what to think about it. like i don't know how to conceptualize <laughs> like where we're at like this is a wild time to be alive folks it's a wild time to be alive and it's only going to get more wild. The more we get into it, dude, like we, we went from where it took 10 years to make big leaps and it was five years to make big leaps. Then it was, you know, two years to make big leaps. And now dude, we're making massive leaps in technology day by day by day. Like dude, chat GPT only gets better. AI only gets smarter. Augmented reality only gets, I mean, cause here's the deal. Google, the Google, what what are they called? Um, what's the, they're not Google, but Apple's new um, Apple Provision. Apple Provision. This is only the first iteration, and here's the deal, boys. It's already March. I can promise you, they've already got number two done, and they're working on number three, and then number four, and then number five, and by number ten or number six, and then Garmin catches up, and they can link. Oh, dude. Dude, I know, I know, dude. And I think, I think, dude, you think boys, you boys don't like watching pro bass fishing now. Just wait five, three years. I'm going to say three years and there will be kids like Trey McKinney on the front deck of his boat with VR headsets on fishing. I'm not saying him in particular. Like, I don't know, but I'm just saying that age group, that age bracket, those kids will have, will have them on. Yeah. Steve Hack, you can. You can if you have a Garmin compatible unit that you have Helm. Um, Golly, that's crazy. That's crazy, dude. Like, yeah. The John B video was the like that was the kid, dude. I watched that and literally sent it to you and said, "This is Black Mirror." I didn't watch it even. You can't. I love John, but I can't watch it because it'll freak you out. I'm at a point, man, and I say this because I do love live scope. Anyone that knows me knows I really enjoy using oh, yeah, forward yeah. facing sonar. Yeah. But I also don't know where I'm comfortable with it going next. <laughs> you know. Okay, so there there's the Am question. I too old? Am I too old? Um, or like 
No, I think it's just I think it's your I think it's your brain. I think it's your morals and your your It's not even morals. It's like how much how much of fishing like do I want to go down? Okay, so what 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 efficiency? What is your limits? What is your limits for technology? Where to you is it been taken too far? I mean, because right now our phones constantly scan our faces, scan our voices to make it a more user friendly experience. We unlock our phones with our faces. It has our body. The fact that my phone knows about things I'm thinking about already is scary. I know that there's algorithm that can figure out like whether it's in what I'm talking about and somehow it like understands my there's have there not been times where you've thought about something and you're like man i swear i didn't even talk about that and i'm getting an ad for it or i'm seeing like news articles mm -hmm. that to me is starting to get scary ai is getting scary where's your limit though where you draw a line i don't know that there i it's hard to draw a line because i don't know that there can be a line like i just have to be okay with it it's sort of like it is what it is. Like, I just need to adapt my okayness because I can't do anything to change it. If I think about changing it, it just, it's like the bass fishing toxicity. Like, I, I am of the mindset, if you're within the rules, I am okay with it. It is what it is. So I just don't want to hear about it. If that makes sense, right? Like, it is what it is. I just need to, I can't change it, you know? But I was, I was bass fishing, like I'm not for me, like I'm not putting live, I'm not gonna have more than probably with current technology, one live scope transducer at the front of the boat. That's what I enjoy. I can scope them if I want, I can side image them if I want. Maybe I'll put like a, a 360s cool, but like I don't I don't want to run two deucers off the back. I don't want to run three deucers up at the uh I like the word deucer. Trailer. I don't want to run one at the console. Like, I just want one. That's what I'm comfortable with. So I'll say my my line is anything I put on my head and see something that isn't what comes through my eyes is reality. Benita, my sister, her husband got a set of the Meta head headsets for Christmas, and I played with them. And I was probably messed with it for like 15 minutes. And when I took them off, my brain, it took it a good 30 seconds to re-rationalize reality. And I could yeah. feel it. Like I could feel my brain doing that. And it took me a minute to for my brain to switch back to this is the physical world, not that made up world that you were just in and even though like the technology isn't like fantastic yet and you can still tell that it's fake it's coming where you're not going to be able to and yeah that's my line bro i mean i love chat gpt even, I, even apple provision is like a weird line because like i guess you're seeing through a tinted lens and so you're seeing the world but like there's something in between you and the world like that's kind of getting freaky to me so apple pro vision is cameras it's got like a bunch of cameras on the outside that give you the view of the outside world you're not actually oh, so that's not them. no it's oh. still a full vr it's an aug they're calling it augmented reality but it's still a full vr because you're being fed the images around you through cameras it reminds me of that backup, like when you're driving, you have that ability on your mirror where you can have it be a camera instead of like yeah. seeing out your rear view. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. That's too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, dude, it's just, I don't know, dude. I, I... It's weird, dude. It's, it's I just, weird... I, everybody, if you ever get the chance, put on some VR goggles and just play with them. Like a good set. Like put on some good, like a meta set or an Apple Vision Pro set and just play with them. Wear them for at least 10 minutes and just like jack around with it. And like you will do things that you never thought you would do. Like there was like Casey Nastat was saying that he had on his, he wore those VR, the Apple Pro Vision. And he said after he took them off, he went to grab a screen that he had had up all day 
and it wasn't there because he was back in the real world. That to me, that's that there is the hard line. Like that's where I I can't do no more. That's it right there. I'm not doing it. Like I would just want that's Black Mirror. Oh, but the thing is, is the thing is, is we are we are. I here's my here's I say my these things, but if I could be Ready Player One, that'd be so cool. Have you seen Ready Player One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where like, you're like able to yeah, run I, and work I, out. It's and, like, coming, dude. Have you seen the Disney floor? I know where you can walk on the floor and you're not moving, but it feels like you're walking and you're in yeah. the headset. And yeah, I know. Yeah, and 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 Benya. Yeah. So Benya, the thing with the Apple Vision Pro is you can see the entire world around you in real time. Like there's no delay whatsoever. That's kind of like the amazing part of the tech is that it is feeding you a live feed of what's around you so fast that your brain is it's processing faster than your brain can process it. So that means you're seeing it in real time as we see it in real time. So people can like walk through traffic and see the world around them. And so here's here's my I'm going to give you what Alex thinks 10 years from now looks like. By the way, we say we're scared of like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm scared to death of it. I don't like it. 10 years from now, this is really truthfully what I think. Are you ready? Yeah. And people are going to be like, no, it's not going to happen. But here we go. Hey, you like that? 10 years from now, desktop and laptop computers will not exist anymore, cell phones will not exist anymore. And everything will be done through a set of VR or augmented reality sort of glasses or headset. And everything that you need or use will be on that. And everything will be in a digital format where there are no physical things anymore. Now, you'll be able to get physical attachments for them. You'll get like a physical keyboard that you can use to type on that is a real keyboard in the real world. That, But everything that you see will not be on a screen like this. It will be through the headset. Because we'll have, we'll have been able to refine and make the headset small enough and more efficient enough that it can do all the things that a MacBook Pro can do. Because when when you really look at the size of a MacBook Pro in comparison to a set of those headphones, dude, it's only a matter of time before you're able to fit an M3 chip into a set of augmented reality, you know, headset or whatever, and. That's it. I think that's where we're at in 10 years. Yeah, I mean, everything is, using the term everything is a little bit much, but yeah, I mean, you'll have the ability to do everything through VR. And so, yes. I, I really don't think desktop, I, I really, I think laptops will exist, but like desktops and other things, I don't think they'll exist. They'll still exist because of corporate and because of too many other outside factors outside of like us. Like corporations are still going to make you have a desktop computer, and they're going to make you have the X Y Z. Or if they can just give you a set of VR goggles that are cheaper. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's, it's going to be like those big. De- it's going to be like those big computers, right? Like those. Like they still exist in the world, and people still use them for some reason. But there's no reason for them to have to exist. I don't like it. I don't like it. All right. Oh, Benjamin, what a world we live in, buddy. I don't know what to think about it anymore. I mean, are you going to switch when they go to an electric motor? One thing I don't think we're going to see anytime soon is flying cars. Oh, I don't think this is turning into the no, Jetsons, okay? No, no. I, I see. I think we're about to abandon electric. I think we're going all hydrogen. Oh yeah. Well, there's I a think, hydrogen boat motor. Yamaha yeah. came up with it. Yeah, I, I think I think the electric thing, dude. Just the the problem with electric at its base level <laughs> is it takes just as much fossil fuels to run electric as it does to run fossil fuel driven things. And then plus there's like these giant slave labor camps and people killing each other over the raw materials and minerals that we need to make batteries for electric. I mean, cobalt mines in China and Africa, there's people having their hands chopped off and shit over that stuff. So I think yeah. ethically and just from a standpoint, like electrical cars are never going to work. And I think that we're going to, it's going to, we're going to have this big switch over to, to nitrogen. And that's going to be the future of what that looks like. I think we'll have nitrogen based motors. 
Also, um, implants. No, I ain't. No, I'll no. Shoot me. That's Mark of the Beast. <laughs> uh, kill me. I'm not doing it. Sorry. Uh, not doing that's it. That's that's Terminator, bro. Hey. Dun, dun, dun. Bring it back to cartoons in the eighties. <laughs> take me back. Is Terminator that. from the eighties or nineties? Eighties, but then there's been a bunch of them. Oh, there's been like yeah, so many Terminators. Yeah, but the original one is just, I love it. I love it. But no, yeah, I don't think we'll ever have electric boat motors. I think it's just not. I don't think there's enough efficiency within that whole system. Like I don't think that technology, and maybe there's some guy out there going like Alex, like you don't understand it enough, but like. I, I I mean, I've got a pretty good grasp on general mechanics and like generally mechanically that just doesn't work. There's not enough efficiency there. I mean, because right now in 2024, I would love to charge my electric boat on the water while it's sitting in the lake. Well, here's my question. How have These we not huge batteries? <laughs> how have we not figured out how to. Okay, so like there's an alternator on my truck that charges my truck battery. Why can't we put alternators on our electric motors to charge our batteries? Alex, you're asking too many questions. That's that, is that like the forbidden question? Yeah, you're not allowed to ask that question. Probably can't charge as fast as you're draining it. I love digs. I seen a gas powered van tow a diesel generator to charge an electric car. It's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Thinking about that, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, no, really, all you do with your starting battery is start your vehicle. Like it just starts the ignition system, which then burns the gas. You're not running the motor off of an electric thing. But I'm also not smart enough to know. So, so Ron Gomer, who actually works on electric cars, said you must create more energy than the generator consumes on a small scale. That's just hard. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. Huh. I don't know. I just find it interesting. I mean, but anyway, what I was going to say in 2024, here we are. I have an electric motor on my kayak that it still requires two 15-pound batteries. So I have 30 pounds of batteries in my kayak to power a three horsepower equivalent electric motor. Oh, so a 250, when you scale that up, you would probably need 3000 pounds of electric batteries to be able to power a 250. Well, they have electric boat motors that are like 40 horse. But it's not a 250. <laughs> what? You got to run Never caught a bass going 70 miles an hour, Alex. Yeah, but I didn't, I never had fun <laughs> driving 20 either. Um, dude, could you imagine how fast an electric 250 would be, though? Probably not, not very slow, not very slow at all. I mean, did you ever been in a Tesla? I've heard they're wild, dude. It is the crazy, it doesn't even feel like reality, like it is the craziest thing. The it, I got in one, put it in, it was put in insanity mode. And like, dude, when he punched it, it's like, I mean, literally, honestly, it's just like, mm. <sighs> like it's crazy, dude. Like, and there's no noise. It's just like, ooh, like it's nuts, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. Ron Gomer said, let's put some AGMs in there, dude. The AGM equivalent of that would literally weigh 130 pounds. Like, which is crazy that that tech to that tech to lithium, but like, I don't know. It would yeah. rip the transom off your boat. If you yeah, had a motor that just went that fast. Yeah. I think that's a, I that think that's a fork. Just, cool. I think that's an issue with it. Dude. Cause right now, uh, no joke. My Newport like sucks up under my kayak. Like if I just punch it all the way to, cause it has to. So they literally put in like a, uh, like a, I don't know what the word for, like yeah. a rev up. Like yeah. what is it? It's not like it didn't just go acceleration. Yeah. Like there's like a gradual acceleration. It goes like, <laughs> Because, like, dude, if you just punch that thing, literally that motor is sitting like this, and it goes, it goes, whoa, and there it goes, dude. It's gone. Like, I remember the first time, and this is different. It's brushless versus whatever the old um, trolling motors used to be. Yeah. But, like, those brushless motors, when you 
if you have it kicked up to 10, like there's no like startup, like, okay, we're up to 10. Oh, it's going. Yeah. Dude. I, the first time I had the Garmin, when I was doing that photo shoot, they're like, okay, don't take it over six. Cause we've not figured out how to like make it. So when you hit the gas, it's not like gone. So like the first time I had it on six, I had it to the side accidentally and I had the button in my pocket and it hit that thing and just was immediately on six. I was in the bottom of the boat. It just goes so fast. It's crazy. See, I want to get that NK 300 on my kayak. Cause I've heard you can literally go like <laughs> eight to nine miles an hour. That bad boy on the back of it. Dude, that is can you so eight miles or you're like, uh, you're like on the water. You're like sitting on the water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, this guy just became a member. Thanks, dude. That's sweet. Yeah, we're going to set up a whole new member thing here soon. Soon. I got to work on that. Sorry, after sorry YouTube cause. Alex is getting rid of your membership. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make sure and let you know, bro. I'll let you know exactly what's going on, but I do appreciate the support. That's big stuff. But, uh, I'm just teasing, by the way. Yeah, dude. I, yeah, kayak's going to get on plane here before too long. Literally, it is. Like, I mean, I think, I think we're going to see – because I have heard rumors about a new motor coming out that can push a Pro Angler 14 to 10 miles an hour. Bro, that is scooting in a plastic boat, bro. That's that is pretty fast. scooting. I mean, today I was going 7.8 with the current. I And against current, I can go about 4.6. Oh, Six yeah, miles an hour. hour. It's like, yeah, it's like wild. You have the Quest yet? No, nah, I ain't got the Quest yet. I've It'll change the way you fish. It'll change the way you fish. So, like, I used to regularly, like, troll my boat around at, like, 0.8 miles an hour, like, when I'm scoping. Now I'm, like, accidentally going, like, one and a half to two miles an hour with my trolling motor on, like, five. It's crazy. At 10, I go 3.8 to four miles an hour. Crazy, dude. It's cranking, dude. That is moving. It changes the way you fish. You're like, oh, my God, I'm going 1.5 miles an hour. Like, I would go 1.7 with my other trolling motor at 10. That's crazy, dude. That's moving, bro. That's moving so quick. That's crazy. Anyways. All right. Hey, listen. I love you, Ben Nowak. I love you, too. You can have these conversations that are rabbit holes and deep and underrated, overrated on family guy. All right. I love how we started on Family Guy and we ended on this. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, I love you guys as well. I appreciate um, all your support. And I am uh, so glad that there's humans out there that love my content and support me the way that you guys do because you guys are amazing. And if you're listening on podcast form, um, do me a favor, leave a review. Apparently that helps. I've been needing to say that. I'll probably put this at the beginning of the episode too so you guys remember that. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, you guys are amazing. Ben, you're amazing. And, uh, as always, you guys are sweet. And I will see YouTube you. YouTube cause you are sweet, too. Gang, gang. You guys are sweet, and we'll see you next.